Good morning, this is Morning Coffee, and um, I was thinking the other day about when I had gone into the store and I was happened to be wearing this red hoodie, and this is before a young Trayvon was slaughtered, um, and I was told, you know, by the person behind the counter that I needed to take it off. Now, I am the least threatening individual and guy at that, so I took it off, and um, Weeks later, um, we experienced something that we did not think could occur in today's society. Yet, if we just look back, you know, over some years, um, and not 10 or 15 years, we can recall um, police killing a young man in New York, uh, shooting the gun 41 times, and, and uh, I don't think that they're serving time, or we can recall um, men in the South dragging a man um, by the truck, you know, these stories. Um, I listen to a lot of NPR, and they kind of give you a lot of details, and, and over time you would think that we would get it. You would really think that we would get it, and you would think that, you know, um, the children in our generation would also get it you would think you would think that we would live in a world where social justice permeated you know throughout the planet and that when a wrong occurred um people would come together regardless of their skin color regardless of their creed religion lack of religion sexual identification that we would come together and we would fight for that social justice. It is clear to me, um, being a miracle-minded person, that sometimes I actually have to say the world that we live in just isn't real. It, it just isn't. It's my way of coping with the inadequacies of human beings, including myself. And on a larger scale, it's my way of thinking about what am I bringing to the table to help transform and conform, you know, these social injustices? Because they occur on many levels. When they occur, depending on the who it occurs to, something markedly different begins to happen. You can see the shift in human consciousness and you can see people being brought together, but the reality is we still end up with a failed system. And for those of us that practice faith, it becomes really hard to keep drawing from the well of faith when it just seems like the further down you have to go just to grab the little bit that you have. It just takes all that it takes to even stay alive and to keep breathing, you know, through some of these horrific and tragic circumstances that, you know, occur on a daily basis. There was a young child in Philadelphia um, who was malnourished, not being treated, not eating. Um, the two parents had the gall to take them to the hospital and claim that something extraordinary had happened to him when it was them. And um, you begin to wonder, how did this child, you know, die? Or why did this child have to die? What, what the social injustices that occur, they occur on a large scale, but you know, it is still our job to love God and serve people and find a way in our own communities to not be silent about the atrocities that we experience, you know, as a whole and individual. Like, even in my personal life, I am confused as to why the government, you know, I'm on dialysis, forces people to take Medicare Part B which is a lower paying insurance and insurance companies make zillions of dollars and set 
rules and regulations. And because I am a working class person, I don't have to take Medicare, but was told that I have to take Medicare because after so many months, and was told this by the insurance company, after so many months, you, um, it's a requirement because it's the government, yet all the money that goes into the insurance company, they could pay for my treatments and then some. So it's like we're just caught in a circle in a whirlwind of absolutely nothingless that leads to social injustice. So I, 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 with my faith, I don't know even how to approach that because, you know, I need dialysis in order to live. And when you start threatening that, it begins to cause me to feel anxious and fearful had I not have faith. And a lot of people may be going through this and don't even know how to work the system, you know, to get what they need. So then the insurance that I have, which is uh, through Aetna, um, you have to spend $1,500 deductible. In today's society, who, unless you're rich, has $1,500 to spend on medication given all the other things that we have to pay for. So it really isn't a system set up to embrace or help you. It is a system that keeps you down unless, of course, you're rich. So, and I'm not talking about being rich in spirit because I am rich in spirit. But my richness in my spirit is not going to pay the medical bills. And you get to a point where you have to be able to discern and understand that. This doesn't mean that I don't have faith. I am alive today. Um, you know, God is going to be God and things are going to work out and, and all those other songs. But the reality is we live in a world where social injustice supersedes developing and growing the human spirit. So, this is probably a different kind of morning coffee, but, you know, being that I am a social worker with a master's degree who has now decided to go back and get his PhD, and, and, and I was even letting that bother me because I thought, oh, student loans, they're already stripping me but this is where faith comes in in the midst of the adversity you find hope that there is something that lies within you that can create a positive energy for change whether you're here living or whether you're dead and gone the work that you were created to do in you is going to happen as a direct result of your faith. So, morning coffee. Have a wonderful day. Peace.